Hello grandchildren, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about maps being different in Australia and high school because those are two things that people asked me about. Ashlyn, my girlfriend's sister who uh, got me to teach you guys how to draw a picture of a horse, messaged me earlier and asked me if maps were different in Australia than they were in America. It's totally understandable if you hear that question and you're really confused because you thought maps were just the same everywhere. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Fortunately, I have two maps hanging on my wall right behind me and I can answer your question. So what happened is she was in science class the other day and they noticed that the longitude lines uh, start getting more curved the further away from the center of the map you go. And she was wondering if that was distorting Australia and if in Australia we have different maps. The complicated answer is it, it, it's complicated. Uh, the easy answer is yes, Australia uses different maps than the United States does. I did purchase both of these maps in Australia and I immediately noticed that the maps looked different than the ones I'd seen back home. It's not super different from the United States, but in the United States most maps uh, have the edge of the map and then the United States and then the Atlantic Ocean and then Africa and Europe and Australia and everything and then the other edge of the map. In Australia most maps that you see have the Pacific Ocean in the center and then the Atlantic Ocean on the edges, which is a little bit weird and it's shifted to the side. Mainly the reason that they do this is because the map companies want the country that they're trying to sell it to as close to the center as possible. One issue that you come across with this is that you have to pick where you want to split the earth in half, and most companies try to do that in the middle of an ocean, and there's only two major oceans that are able to split the globe longitudinally. Longitudinally? Longitudinally. 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 I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, the layout of this map puts Australia as close as possible to the center of the map without really cutting off anything major. This gets a little bit complicated, but it does have the added value of with some map projections distorting Australia less because it's in the center. The longitude lines start curving the further away from the center that you get, and there is going to be weird shape distortions along the edges in some map projections. That's important. It gets kind of complicated because the Earth is a ball, and it's really difficult to map a sphere's surface onto a two-dimensional plane. There isn't really any way to do it without distorting something. The best map projections distort the ocean rather than the land masses, but you're still messing with the, the, uh, the size of everything. One of the most popular map projections is called the Mercator, and uh, there's this website that's really cool that I like going on. Okay, cool is a strong word. It's it's really lame, but it's cool to look at. Some, I, I'm... Anyway, there's this cool website that uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link in the description um, that lets you pick different map projections and see how they distort the Earth when you center it on different points. And that do may maybe doesn't make sense, but I'll pop it up on the screen so you can actually see. Like I said, every projection is warping something in order to try to turn a sphere into a 2D plane. So if you pick a different center, it's going to change what it's distorting and you can actually see how messed up the map is. The best way to solve this problem is to just buy a globe because they're neat and it ignores the problem entirely and by just putting a sphere onto a sphere. Sphere-ish. It's not, the Earth isn't actually a perfect sphere, but it's close enough. Unfortunately, I don't own a globe because I'm a bum. The problem with a lot of map projections, especially the Mercator, is that the further on the y-axis you get from the center, the larger things appear. So the th shapes that are on the edges of the map, at the top and the bottom, are going to be way bigger than the things that are right in the middle. Which is why Greenland has a tendency to look huge. Antarctica always looks especially massive, even though it's, again, not that big. So to answer your question, yes, maps are different here in Australia because it it's trying to keep Australia away from the edge as much as possible so it's less distorted. And because it looks nicer when the country that you're in is right in the middle of the map. And, and again, there really isn't that much of a way to solve this problem unless you just use a globe instead of a map. Uh, which personally, I think would be great. Everyone should just have little pocket globes that they carry around when they need to look at the earth. They just look at the consult their pocket globe. and. No one's going to like this, are they? If you're not into the pocket globe thing, you could just get an app on your phone like Google Earth that will project the Earth's map onto a 3D sphere and let you move around and orient yourself in 3D space around that sphere and zoom in on things. And I guess that works if you don't want pocket globes. Anyway, yeah, that's 
That's the way it is. Sorry if I over-explained that. Maps are my passion. Just kidding. I don't... They're not my passion, but they're interesting. So, yeah. Let's move on. So I know I've talked about how I put that little question ASCII form in the description on a lot of my videos. That way people who are watching them right now can ask me questions in place of you, my actual grandchildren, uh, just because they're alive and you're not, unfortunately. Anyway, the other day I got my first real question from somebody. I'm not counting your horse question, Ashlyn, because that was bullshit. The question was from this guy that I know back home named Randall, who went to school with me and was in my drama class for a while, so I acted in plays with him and stuff. Anyway, he asked, how would you describe your high school experience? Favorite part? Worst part? I mean, I miss punching your face every night for eight days back in Brides of March. I actually miss that too. I mean, he never actually really punched me. It was stage punching. Actually, I don't know. I can't remember if he actually punched me. In a lot of the plays in high school, we did stage combat instead of actually hitting each other because that's safer and there's less pain and blood. Anyway, you pretty much just have to like choreograph how do you punch somebody or slap somebody without actually slapping them and how do you make the sound happen. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Anyway, you're pretty much just fake punching and slapping. But there, there's at least like five or six times that I was actually hit by somebody when that happened just because they were getting too into it and they weren't thinking about the actual... Uh, choreography and accidentally went just a little bit too far and actually hit me in my face area. I'm not saying that Randall did that, I'm just saying I don't remember at this point if he did or not. He might know. I know Allison definitely actually slapped me once and Ryan punched me in the face. In the mouth. Anyway, back to the question which was asked, what was my high school experience like? There's just so much that happens in high school because that's the point in your life when you're finally kind of becoming an adult. When you're in junior high and middle school, nothing really happens that's a major life changer. Uh, everyone just kind of is. You just, you just exist and you have friends and then you think that you have enemies even though it's just really stupid tiny things but then you go to high school and that's when people actually start entering the real world that's when there's a time in a lot of people's lives where other people start dying that's that's the time when a lot of people are getting jobs and cars and entering the real world and during that transition over that four years it's so much happens to everybody so i like i don't know how i describe my high school experience other than it was just life life happened i changed I'm a completely different person now that I've been through high school than before. Not because of the high school that I went to or anything that happened in particular there, but it's just everything and the point in my life that I was at going through high school. Before high school, I was the dorkiest kid in existence. I'm not saying that I'm not now, but I was worse then. Before high school, I never combed my hair, ever. And I also didn't cut my hair. It was always in this weird, not quite afro thing going on, and I am completely ashamed of myself back then. I also always wore ridiculous clothes that didn't really fit, and I always wore these giant, like, winter jackets in all year long, which I don't know why I did that. There was also a really intense stage of junior high where I decided that I wanted to be a magician, and every day I would bring a pack of cards to school and I would do tricks for people, and they were all so awful. Anyway, when I went to high school, I pretty much had to leave behind every one of my friends that I had in junior high. All were going to different high schools, and I was going pretty much alone, except for like one or two other people from my school that were going to Foothill. And when that happened, I, I don't know what I don't know what happened. I decided that I was kind of sick of being called names and looking stupid and people telling me that I looked stupid and I decided that I wanted to try to be cooler. Um, I know it didn't really work, but I like I tried to dress better. It was a slow process. It, it was an instant. I just slowly kind of became more aware of how I was dressing myself and what I was doing with myself and how I was interacting with people. That's the point in my life where I started faking being confident all the time. I was always the kid that stared at the ground all the time. Whenever I walked anywhere, I was looking at the ground and that, it was little things like that that when I went into high school, I decided that I wanted to try to change about myself. So I, had a, I was forcing myself to pretend like I wasn't as self-conscious as I actually was, and I had to force myself to always look towards the horizon, never at the ground. I was not allowed to look at the ground. And, but it was pretty much just, that was kind of the beginning of the transformation of me in junior high to me now. Or, I mean, I'm still changing even today, but I feel like the majority of the changes that I've gone through happened 
during high school. Also, I think before I move on to the next bit of the question, I have to make sure that you guys are clear that I just did awful in high school my second half. I went into high school pretty strong. I In junior high, I was like a 4.0 student, always like straight A's. And I kind of did that through the beginning of high school. And then my whole crisis thing happened and I just gave up on all of that. And I started, especially my senior year of high school, I was like just really intensely starting to fail a lot of my classes. And it was like, there was at one point where I was not sure if I was going to graduate or not. That was kind of scary. I've always had trouble paying attention to things, especially things that I wasn't really interested in. And I've always been way better at learning on my own than in a classroom. So with that in mind, what was my favorite and worst part about high school? Uh, definitely the worst part was uh, towards the end, being in some of the classes that I was in just I couldn't uh, I couldn't pay attention to anything every day felt like an eternity in some of those classes not that there was anything wrong with those classes a lot of those teachers were great teachers it's just something wrong with me that uh, I couldn't force myself to pay attention anyway let's move on to my favorite things from high school I, I think also my favorite thing of high school was kind of the same thing that was the worst it was me giving up kind of on uh, a lot of the classes because the, again I talked about this more in the early life crisis entry I felt like before in my life I hadn't really spent time enjoying things and I was just working on things and I finally started trying to enjoy things and enjoy people that I was with and enjoy just just everything so like, like I mean I loved my drama class I loved being able to just do things and enjoy and be on a stage and have fun with things and not have to worry about things that were stressful in my life. I love being in place for the same reason, just because you got to you got to be this other person for a little bit and you got to make people laugh. And that's great. Not that I think that I'm particularly good at acting or particularly funny, but um, it's really nice to to notice when you're doing a good enough job in a part that it makes other people laugh. And uh, that's really one of the one of my favorite feelings that I had in high school. And I think another thing that's one of my favorite parts of high school was the friends that I made. And I, that sounds really, really stupid and cheesy, but it's I made like just probably about a dozen really good friends. It, it, all my friends were different, but most of them were were all very bold in their own ways. And it was really I think like that kind of shaped who I am a little bit. Uh, just being around all these people who were completely differently, but also kind of the same bold, and they were not afraid to to do things that they want to. Not afraid to go climb a mountain, not afraid to go screaming something in the middle of a crowd, not afraid to sit in the middle of pouring rain just because it's kind of liberating when you say screw you to nature and embrace the rain. But it's kind of interesting that my favorite parts of high school didn't actually have to do with high school as much as the people that I went to high school with. But yeah, I think, I think if I have to answer that question seriously, I would say, my favorite part of high school was kind of becoming liberated as a person. Anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you, Randall, for asking me that question. I miss you punching me every night in Breads and Marge as well. Grandchildren, if you see this anytime in the near future, uh, we should practice um, stage combat and get really good at it while your parents aren't aren't there so they don't know that we're doing this and then you guys can fake punch each other and then they're gonna freak out thinking that you guys are actually punching each other and then i'm gonna be really satisfied as the grandpa because grandparents aren't allowed to be at fault for anything they can't do anything wrong so they'll just be like grandpa don't teach them how to fake punch each other it'll be great i yeah um anyway grandchildren i'll talk to you guys in the next entry mm -hmm.